Oh, I've been smashing the new Nas album. That's been a pretty decent listen. Um, obviously, him and Hit Boy delivered once again on King's Disease Part Two or King's Disease Two. Um, solid from front to back. Obviously, the standout track with um, Nas and uh, Lauren Hill on it is just you know phenomenal. You hear Lauren Hill rapping, um, which a lot of people have been missing. A lot of people have been crying out for, and she returned and kind of reminded everybody why she's so highly regarded and why people seem to have just as much time for her. Um, as some of the other elite rappers that we seem to have in a scene even though she only kind of produced one critical body of work of course but still Miss Education is still an album that kind of doesn't it, it stands the test of time which is something I've not really understood why people can kind of hold that as a slight against you just because you have one classic they say that you can't be in a conversation of the greatest ever because you've only got one it's like what's the problem of having one vis-a-vis putting out 10 shitty albums and only doing one classic between that Do you know what I mean there's no it doesn't seem like there's any kind of um clear discerning criteria that would make that person who puts out 10 albums and then has one classic in the uh, on the 11th and the person that pushes puts out one magnus opus and then kind of dips i don't think that's a bad thing if i think it kind of speaks to her level of perfectionism that she didn't want to try and follow it up with a sequel or anything or anything or just try and build upon that just kind of left it for what it was and let the fans enjoy it which was quite good to see so that album was pretty strong listen to um it's just a joyous record i think if that makes any kind of sense maybe it's the fact that you know I, i'd imagine if you're a hit boy and you're working with somebody like a nas right there's probably how do you say this it makes sense it to me it would assume it seems like there's probably less i would say i would assume there's probably less kind of oh yeah there's on the screen here but it's probably less um Wow, it pitchfork gave Kings of Z a 6.1. That's how you can't really give any sort of credence to review sites. I know a lot of people give a shit about what anti Fantana and those people say, which I've never really understood. Maybe it's from a different era, but the last thing I want is to get maybe it's one thing being recommended an album from somebody because they reviewed it not because of what they say just because they reviewed it i might have not heard of a band or an artist i'd be like oh who's that and then i'll go check them out but in terms of kind of you know um cultivating my entire musical library based upon what some people think is good or bad or what pitchfork seems to pick out as one of their picks it's like nah i'm not gonna do that and this is a clear example because i thought king's disease 2 was of course not as good as king's disease um the the original but still really up there in terms of one of the better Nas albums in recent years especially for people who have been saying oh he doesn't pick good beats oh um the production is usually crap oh you know he sounds dated this is a real refreshing sounding Nas without him doing that crony without him doing that corny thing that Nas what Usher was doing a few years ago where Usher whenever Usher was dropping I don't know why he seemed to be infatuated with trap sounding beats and he'd keep kind of doing these weird um these weird tunes where there'd be like a 60 second bridge which was amazing but the rest of it was just this trap sounding nonsense that he was trying to obviously cater to the younger generation but just wasn't working because just wasn't doing what he was great at doing which is creating great pop um r&b sort of records and he just wasn't willing to do that he wanted to kind of tap into what the kids were doing at that time it just sounded terrible at least with this nas record he just sounds grown but it also sounds you know modern yeah without sounding too cringe um it doesn't come across too boomery i don't know what it is just a perfect mix and again maybe it's the fact that if you're hit boy and you work with somebody so established as a nas even though there's a lot of pressure in terms of delivering and obviously meeting expectation and all that malarkey i'd imagine for the most part because he's so self-assured and he knows who he is as a person he's obviously extremely wealthy with all these investments that he's done i think he was one of the earlier investors in coinbase and whatnot it makes it puts less pressure on the album the album then becomes a little bit more of an experiment a little bit more of a creative sort of playground to just test out new ideas fall around with a couple of things and try and see what sticks to the wall and wow i think for me it kind of it really hit it off man it just sounds so lush so luxurious so refreshing so joyous layered um the range and the beats is just crazy. I think, you know, similar to what we saw with London on the track and um 
and Summer Walker. I think when two people are working in tandem like this from the front to the beginning, they end up kind of bringing out of each other more than you would have ever expected. So to hear Hit Boy be able to make some really classic hip hop boom bappy type beats and also go into the kind of really atmospheric, grandiose type of big room things that you'd imagine a Rick Ross could really slide all over and then go back to the kind of classic stuff again, more R&B type and stuff. It's just amazing to see his range. And for sure, like as a hit producer, I would assume Hit Boy's rates have probably gone up too off the back of this album. But I really, really enjoyed it. I thought it was incredible. Like, again, there's something that I listened to in the background whilst I was in the gym. And I found it very, very enjoyable. No skips for me for the most part. I thought from the start to the finish, even some of the skits. That's what I mean. If an album's good, the skits don't annoy you. Sometimes when I remember Tori is one of these albums that was terrible. And especially when you consider his mixtapes. But I think he learned his lesson and didn't do it again. But he tried to do his whole skits thing and tell a story. And it just, you know, threw off the album and made it a flipping chore to listen to. But if the, if the album's good, you don't mind putting up with the skits. And that's why I kind of saw with um, Nas as King Disease too. So I definitely recommend check it out. Um, definitely a standout album. And again, no no need to listen or read to what review sites say. Because Pitchfork here, I've got it. This is a 6.1. I'm like, huh? 6.1? Like, I, I, and the thing that 6.1, maybe I, I don't know how they score it. Are they scoring it based on what they think the album is or based on what other albums are? Because if we look at what album, other albums this year got a 6.1, I, I would, it, you know, I think Niles would probably be insulted if he saw his name kind of listed alongside this illustrious, um, you know, um, company. But hey, it is what it is. You know, everyone's got um, the right point of view when it comes to music. It's all kind of a matter of taste. But again, like I said, if you're a fan of hip hop and you love all that stuff, I really recommend that you check it out. And this is a banging, banging, banging album. Um, what else?